Welcome to uh, here in downtown Boston near South Station. I'm Jen Hazlett, and my colleague Ann Payton is here today. We are actually here with a group of about 35 folks from all over the region, and we're about 45 minutes into our donor stewardship workshop. Uh, we're going to have you join us here today, and um, then we'll get back to our live participants and do some more hands-on work. So welcome, and thanks for joining us. We want to make sure that you understand the difference between cultivation and stewardship. <laughs> so we have done this Venn diagram. The big picture on the left is cultivation activities, prospect identification, qualification, qualifying a donor. Does that person have a connection to the organization? Do they, have do they give philanthropically? And do they have capacity to give? matching mission and values, trust in the leadership. We just talked about that in early engagements. Then once a donor makes a gift, once a person makes a gift, they kind of switch over into the stewardship. How do we thank them immediately for their gift? How do we make sure they're know, they know that their gift um, is used in the way it was intended and also the impact of their giving? And also uh, how we acknowledge them, recognize them, and again, multiple engagements, more activity. And all of that is driving toward more donor engagement. We're going to really ask you today, all of you here today with us and folks joining us online, to really bring this question to mind. Your focusing question for your day and for your work as a nonprofit professional working with donors is, how can I bring my natural curiosity about my donors to engage them more deeply? And when we say your natural curiosity, this is not something that we have to really work deeply to find. It's more about relaxing into thinking about our donors as human beings and really caring about them and really wanting to know more about who they are and why they give to our organizations or why they don't. What do they care about? Really not trying to find uh, to try to make the match between our mission of our organization and our donors' interests. So what we're trying to do is find that sweet spot between the values and beliefs in the organization and the programs and the interests of the donor. We're looking for those two big Venn diagrams. We find it's very helpful when you've got something you want to explain or understand to use Venn diagrams. They're phenomenally illustrative. You see things that you... Uh, you see in a different way. So Jen is looking at the right side, the donor interests, and on the left side, the organizational interests. And that sweet spot in the middle is where you're meeting the donor. So a lot of this is about understanding your donor. It's not about simply projecting more information from your organization. It's about understanding your donor, listening, open-ended questions. We're going to do a lot of that practice today. So in thinking about your donor, it's what do they care about? And we're going to be talking today, we'll be talking about surveys, how to engage them, how to ask open-ended questions to really have an understanding about what they care about, and values and beliefs. So I just met with a donor <laughs> yesterday, and I came prepared to tell her about a project. And then I slowed myself down, and I started asking her questions about what she really cared about, and I began to realize that the project that I was coming to tell her about was really not going to be inside of her personal mission and what she cared about. So I directed the conversation more to learning more about her, what was at the center of her philanthropy. And I was then able to really shift into a much more honest and authentic conversation as opposed to just you know, charging ahead on my agenda. That is donor-centered stewardship and solicitation. We have here another illustration that Anne and I created, which we think is really important and valuable to be thinking about um, what, what is the donor engagement cycle. We spend a lot of time in the nonprofit sector looking at the beginning part of this donor engagement cycle. Who are potential donors? How do we identify and qualify them? A lot of board members will say, find new donors, find new donors. And that's an important piece of what you need to do. It's 
also essential and what we're focusing on today in this workshop is how do you keep the donors you already have and more deeply engage them in the life of your organization so that they become loyal supporters and people who are really more fully engaged in your work. Initial contact is an important piece of what many of you are doing, getting together with people and learning more deeply. So that can be surveys, potentially, or visits, or through the mail. But what we're focusing on today is this deepening of the relationships. We, and it's, it's, not, it's not linear, right? We, have, we start by listening, engaging, asking, and appreciating, and then it starts all over again. We're going to focus a lot today on this deepening of engagement, and deepening relationships. What we really want for our donors is for them to be, as we've used this word, engaged. And what does that look like? What do we want from them? We want them to feel. How, how do we want them to feel? How do we want them to act? What do we want them to do? We want them to give, but we want them to also more deeply care. And so we really love this, um, these three words, because we think what, what you're doing as you begin to think about individual donors is how am I going to get them? I actually don't like what I just said. How am I going to get them? It's not, it's not a, a game. It's a really thinking about the person and bringing them forward in your mind who is this person that I'm sitting across from? What do they feel? How, how, what do I want them to really know about my organization? We asked all of you who are here with us today in the audience to bring two donors to practice with today to think about. And we're going to be doing some exercises later to really bring those two donors into the room. And for those of you who are not here with us today, we really encourage you as we're speaking, to try to bring specific donors to mind so that this is not just a um, philosophical or a uh, intellectual discussion, but it's really bringing real people into, the, into your minds and hearts. Earlier we asked you about the organizations that you give to, and you came up with impact of your personal giving, the passion and experience for the organization, you, you talked about donor testimonials. Those are things that are, those are stories that are very helpful because they're usually one-on-one -on -one stories. And also uh, to think about the emotional part of, of organizations and giving and less of the clinical part. One of the things in that previous slide about donor loyalty was the fifth next important aspect for Adrian Sargent was donors who had had some kind of personal connection with the organization. Serve friend, a neighbor. So that was the part that didn't quite make that cut for me. I want to talk about getting donors into the kitchen. This is a metaphor that uh, Kay Sprinkle Grace in her book, Fundraising, Beyond Fundraising, and that's the attribution in the slide, uh, talked about uh, a Bertolt Breck going into, an organi into a restaurant, having a wonderful meal, paying his bill, and leaving. The next week going into another restaurant, having a wonderful meal, and the chef came out and said, Mr. Breck, would you like to come back and see how we do this in the kitchen? And he said, that's interesting. Came back, saw. Of course, it was a nice, clean kitchen. Nobody was throwing food. Everything was just nice. And then he went back to his table, got his bill, and paid. Which, or, which restaurant do you think he would go back to another time? The one with the kitchen tour. So what Kay Sprinkle Grace has introduced to us is the metaphor of having your donors come into the kitchen in all kinds of ways. We've got a couple examples here. I need the slide advancer. It's interesting. So in a telephone town, this is one organization that ran a telephone town meeting. So they invited their leadership donors, and they found that people who um, were invited to the call but didn't make it, couldn't get on the call, actually gave more than the people who were not invited when they had a parallel study. People who listened up to 15 minutes gave 60% more in their next gift, and people who listened more than 15 minutes gave 350% more in their next gift. What's that saying to us is, here's a wonderful engagement tool 
for donors at whatever level you would like to identify them, talking to the chief executive officer or the executive director and having firsthand information, very insider kind of experience um, and feeling like they are important to the organization to be invited to the call. So that's one way of thinking about in the kitchen. So if you don't have literally a kitchen, think about the metaphor. That's one way to think about a telephone town meeting. Another one is thank you letters. So one organization said, we're going we're to thank our donor, and we're going to express in that a couple paragraphs, or one paragraph, about when you started giving and what's happened in the organization over that period of time to today when you just made a recent gift, which automatically glues you to the kinds of things that have gone on in the organization while you've been giving. Very clever way of getting people into thinking about the organization without having to participate in something, without having to come to an event. So that's another method of in the kitchen. And they found that um, there, for these people, revenue went up 54%. What we want you to be thinking about is how do you get the donors into your kitchen? One of the primary ways that pe volunteers um, get engaged is through specific volunteer activities. Now, that's not always possible at some organizations. I've worked with a domestic violence organization that really struggles with how do we bring people specifically into our kitchen, per se. But there are, uh, there are ways, and I think what I'm really encouraging you to do and what we're going to be doing here today is sort of digging deep into where, what are the ways that we bring our folks into the kitchen. What that a domestic violence organization is working on is they, instead of sending things out to a mail house and spending a lot of money, they're looking at bringing together a group of people who are their mailers. And they get together on a monthly basis and help get out the newsletter because there are lots of folks, um, often retirees who have time or people who are at home who want to have their hands in supporting your organization. So really, as we're thinking about our donors, what are the ways that we can get them into the kitchen? One of the things that well, we were talking about, open-ended questions, you'll hear that, that term quite a bit. You don't want to ask your donor questions that just receive a yes or no answer. This is sort of relationship building 101 in terms of deeply engaging folks, whether they're your donors or your friends or people you're interested in learning more about. But you're really wanting to know from your donors what inspires them. You might ask them specific thoughts on a strategic plan or a program. These open-ended questions behind us are just some examples. And what Annie and I also would really love you to consider is sharing these questions with board members and staff members. So that when you're at an engagement event, you're at a cocktail party, people don't automatically launch into their shtick about the organization. But you are creating a culture of philanthropy in your organization that really looks at listening to donors and trying to understand what donors already care about and what they might want to learn more about. This is a perfect segue into wanting to know what they might want to know more about. So uh, imagine that you are a staff member in your organization event, a public reception. You can ask somebody that you meet who's a donor or somebody in the public, hopefully somebody who's a donor, what inspires you about our work? Even somebody who's not a donor who comes to your event somehow is inspired by your work. I want to I emphasize that when somebody gives money to you, they are saying, hello, and how you say hello back to their first gift and their next several gifts will make a huge difference in how much they feel appreciated by your organization. So that's a key question that anybody can ask just about at any time. This next set of slides is, next set of questions, is a little bit more in-depth or more sophisticated, thinking about asking someone, what would you like to achieve with your philanthropy? That's not something that you're likely to uh, ask on the first, hello, how are you, I'm so-and-so. A very good question is, what's the most satisfying gift you've ever made? Now, 
that's something that you could ask. We just kind of practice that in terms of loving the organization that you give to. It's a very exciting opportunity for a donor to tell you what the most exciting gift was that he or she would made. And of all the organizations that you support, who, give, who does the best job of engaging you? Because then you're hearing, one, the donor's other interests, presumably, and two, that other organizations can provide an excellent um, model for you to think about how that donor, your donor, is engaged in another organization. I love this slide and this image of this young woman. People give to people. What you really want is to have authentic conversations. This is proven the most effective way to ask somebody for a gift is face to face. The most effective way. That's where the largest gifts come in and where people feel most engaged with the organization. Now, you cannot have a face-to-face -face interaction with everyone, but what you're looking for is how to expand your face-to-face -face interactions and how to personalize your communications. A lot of stewardship is personalization. What about that personal note? Making sure that on the outside of the envelope you have a handwritten um, return address and addressee so that people know that you're thinking about them and that it's not a um, mass-produced piece. Stewardship is about really trying to think about your donors as individuals but also as groups of people so that you're trying to segment and think about who they are and what they care about as you're looking at your stewardship plan. I've mentioned a model of how to manage a conversation. This is a wonderful model that was developed by a woman named Andrea Kielstedt. We're going to use it especially in the cultivation and solicitation workshop in May. We're going to use it this afternoon in terms of the practice with your donors that you brought into the room. And it's simply a way to open a conversation, to kind of settle, establish some rapport with, a, with the person you're meeting with, to confirm why you're meeting, to explore with open-ended questions what's important to your donor, what does your donor value, and then to either make an ask or a presentation. At this point, it might be that you are asking the person you're talking with about some ideas about a new program, help us establish the kind of parameters we'd like in a new program, or um, to give you feedback on the strategic plan that you've shared with them. So some kind of presentation and ask. And then the second explore is really, again, listening to your donor and what he or she is telling you or what the family is telling you. Then a kind of confirm and close the conversation. If it's about a strategic plan, let, let us get back to you. Those are great ideas. Let us get back to you to see how they fit with the rest of our thinking. Thank you for joining us today for the live stream. Um, we are going to be joining back with the people who are here with us today and digging, rolling up our sleeves and doing some real practice. We hope that you'll join us again. Um, we'll actually be doing a workshop, Annie and I, together on May 3rd here at Third Sector New England to do more solicitation practice, to actually practice asking for gifts and uh, doing some uh, role playing, which um, I hesitate to say online because people uh, try to run away from, but is really the best way to actually get comfortable and confidence. Uh, the difference between uh, a fundraiser who is confident and one who isn't is the difference between success and not being successful. So thank you so much for joining us, and um, we'll hope to see you again.